What was glorious about the Glorious Revolution? Was it glorious for everyone? No, no it wasn't. The Glorious Revolution was basically a simple change from a single king monarchy to a constitutional monarchy which eventually perishes to a parliament with an ornament of a king or queen. Although the change is actually quite drastic, it would have not been possible without the great and mighty power of the Tudor dynasty setting up its own fall. First to show how far the king has fallen from power, by the time Charles I rolls around, or maybe just when his head does, we must show the English kings at their finest. This means Henry VIII in the early 16th century. Henry VIII was a great example of a king who knew what it meant to have power. How can we tell this? Simple. He created his own church, the Anglican Church of England, and made himself the Pope, just so he could marry whoever he pleased which he did six times. Now, disobeying the Pope at the time was something that was simply not done, because while kings were chosen by God, the Pope was, for all intents and purposes, God on earth. It can be said that it all went downhill from heartbreaking Henry, but honestly, who can top creating your own church? The next king was Edward VI, Henry's only son out of his three children with his three wives. This boy was very sickly, thus his uncle took power and introduced the Book of Common Prayer. This shows immense power as well. People take their religion very seriously, as we remember from the Protestant Reformation which is still raging on at the time. Sadly, this king dies out of the king because half sister Mary took over. She was a devout Catholic who tried to eradicate the Anglican Church and all non Catholics. She did the latter by executing around 300 Protestants, which earned her the nickname from the glory of Henry VIII, we have one small shining moment during Elizabeth I's reign. She was a queen who used sexual appeal and neutrality to rule sufficiently in a new era of Protestant England. This was amazing because it was very difficult for women to do anything by themselves in this time period, especially have positions of power. She was a quite capable leader, which can be seen from her military power from defeating the Spanish Armada and for her concerns of the poor people in England by creating in the provision in 1600. Like all great things, Elizabeth reign came to an end and came, soon came James I. This is where everything truly goes downhill. He was an okay king and loved by everyone. Although his reign was plagued by wars of religion and religious uprising, he was also dragged into the Thirty Years' War. The religious problems continued into Charles I's reign. Charles was confronted with opposition from the parliament and from Protestants. Without supporters, Charles was left to the mercy of whoever won, which unfortunately for him were the Puritans who only thought the only way to set up their new government to chop off his head. The new Puritan Republic under the Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell did not last very long. It was soon replaced by Charles II who was tricked by something called the Popish Plot to let his brother James II come into rule. He was hated by everyone and soon fled out of the country and was replaced by William the Orange and Mary to become the new King and Queen of England. And they signed the Bill of Rights in 1689 which forevermore rendered the King a pawn of the Parliament and just a status symbol of England.